lambda is the XA for the ideal world, XA and the real world, and XA and the integration, open the picture, I will uh, do the conclusion. I will try to be as fast as possible. <coughs> okay. The ideal world. What is the ideal world? The ideal world is uh, a world where we, you have a partner, a process, and uh, each partner is uh, the context N. And we start the context, we start the process, and after the while, uh, we had three modifications in the partner one context, two modifications here, seven here, five here, and unfortunately, hop, we have an error that occurs during the process. In the ideal world, what happened? We send back the message to the partner, and magically, hop, we come back to the process we were back to the original context. Of course, if you made any study in IT science, you know that two-phase commits or XA propose this kind of feature with the commit rollback and with XA we, send, uh, we prepare the connection and we do a commit if it's success and rollback if we fail and we come back to the previous uh, context. But this is, as I tell you, the ideal world. XA, of course, is perfect for our ideal world. We are all familiar with uh, XA to face commit connection. Why? Because XA was proposed in to face commit connection was proposed in mainframe, database, connector manager, JE server. <coughs> XA provides the once and only once delivery. It means that you know you have three different types of delivery: zero n, one n, and one one. It means the first zero n means that you send a message. You don't know if your partner received the message or not. Maybe he received the message many times. You don't know. The first level. The second level is one n. You guarantee that your partner receives the message once. Maybe he can receive the message many times. One one he received. Once and once and once the message. Two phase commit has been the basis of uh, 70, 80, 90 IT software. Good. The real world. The context of uh, XA is a context for Kerbiz, you can translate in French to <laughs> Well, the ideal world is very difficult to implement. Why? Because XA needs special conditions for working well. The condition to work on two-phase two transaction is uniformity and proximity. Uniformity means that it uh, 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 does not work in a non-uniform environment. And for example, if you use an heterogeneous application, it's very difficult to implement XA. Proximity, uh, XA works only if the partners are collocated in the same place. Uh, being on the same network doesn't mean co-location. How do you say that? I can't find internet zero zeros. They say OO in English? No? I know, they say OO. In the OO, internet placed XA and the ideal world. Why? Let's see. In the past, we were used to use, to use in a silo application. But now, with internet, we have to collaborate with multiple clients, multiple partners, multiple providers, and they have to work all together. In, uh, in the past, we were used to use mainframe system, unique system, but now, we have multiple technology, multiple platform, multiple protocol, multiple language, and to work all together is completely different. In the past, when you had an application with, let's say, 1,000 person, you are happy, 10,000, you were the king. Now, you can use, for example, I know that uh, Facebook has more than 600, 600 million people. So, this means that 
in the past you had one server and then you went to the database and now you have multiple server and of course multiple database. In the old world, many projects, when you are younger than me, uh, but in the old world, many projects fail in the distributed environment. And people say, why do you fail? Why are you not able to provide what you provide in the 70s, 80s, and 19s? The Ayman and Mark say, ah, because you have not the no good knowledge in the past, it was better. You can use bad technology and bad reform. It's the dead of, it's the dead of GDE, the dead of SOA. You have a lot of, if, you, if you search on internet, it's really interesting to see how many dead have been announced on the internet. And more than that, in the OOs, the big editor, like uh, no one from Oracle, IBM, it's okay. Uh, and Oracle and IBM say, yes, of course, you can all, you can use our, uh, our uh, software in the distributed environment. No problem, it's all perfect. <laughs> of course. <clears throat> now let's explain why this XA was so difficult to implement on this kind of uh, software. To, to do that, we have to come back in the three main architecture we had in the IT history. The first uh, architecture was the centralized, centralized architecture where you had, uh, let's say, a very large server with a database, a stupid uh, terminal, and applications that were able to communicate together. In the end of 1819, maybe, we launched exactly. You had a client server architecture where you had some uh, uh, application hosted in the terminal that communicates together through the uh, database server. And the last architecture, the last, of, not the last, the third architecture is a distributed architecture where applications were connected with a network. And of course, because the application are able to communicate together, the architect and the designer thought it was exactly the same <coughs> than working with the mainframe. Of course, it's not exactly the same thing. Huh? Why? Uh, because the network creates some latency between, let's say, group of users or a group of server, group of partners. And the network is not a simple extension. And the latency creates what we name partitioning. Partitioning means that if this group is able to work, uh, no, excuse me, if you stop this group, maybe this group is still working. That's what we name partitioning. In a name, for example, if you stop the mainframe, all the, all the applications stop at the same time. But it's the case if you have, for example, many, uh, many servers. So, thanks God, Mr. Eric Brewer came in 2002 and said, I would like to explain what is the CAP theorem. Who knows what is the CAP theorem? Hey, good! More than... <coughs> CAP theorem stands for consistency, availability, and partitioning. This theorem has been mathematically proved by the two people from the MIT, this is uh, Gilbert, I think, or uh, Mr. Lynch, I think. CAP is a mathematical answer to the OO's management. They say, why you are not able to do it? Now it's very easy for us to say, yeah, because of the cap theorem, we have an answer. I will explain what is the cap theorem. The cap theorem says, in a network, in a distributed environment, you have three properties. The first property is consistency. It means that we want consistency in our context. Then we have also availability. It means that the data into the context must be available for everyone. And we want also to create some partition. This means partition, we have many partners, one partner here, one another there, and if one stops, the other can continue to work. The CAP theorem says, on this free property, you can add just two at the same time. What does it mean? You can add all C and A, or C and 
B or A and B. In the first case, if you have C and A, this means you have no partitioning. In that case, you can work, you can create some two-phase commit system. Because to have a two-phase commit system, you need to have a full availability and a full consistency. That's the reason to, to deploy the two-phase commit. But now, in our distributed application, because we need more power, we have more partners, we have more technologies, we have, in all the case, P. So we have to choose between C and A. This means that we are not able to implement XA again anymore. So you have two cases. If someone works with a non-SQL, maybe I think you have a you had a conference on the next year, yeah? And you can choose between the consistency and the availability for a partitioned environment. Just an example, you have three offices, <coughs> one in Nice and Belgium and one in Germany. The office in Brussels say, oh guys, I want, I, I'm sure it's to me, I want consistency. An office in Brussels wants some data here. He sent a message to Berlin and Nice and said, OK, please don't touch the database. He put a loop. He gets the data, but in that time, data are not available. Data are not available here. And not the data. And in that case, data are consistent, but not always available. The second case, we want availability. I get the data, I made a process, get the data, I made a process, oh, can put the data, put the data, data are available, but not always, not always, consistent. Okay? So, what are the consequences of the CAP program? We cannot have, at the same time, consistency and availability. It looks like if you, if you, if someone of you made some physics, you remember maybe the, the principle of Heisenberg that say you can have the position and the speed of the of the particle at the same time. Good. So the capital F explains many things. And the concept is very difficult to explain to business people, to manager. And <laughs> for example, business people say, okay, why we don't choose transaction? design a business process without using transaction. But we tell them, look, we are in a distributed environment. We cannot use Excel transaction. We just have a specification running on Excel, okay. Uh, because we are not using Excel, it seems that it's a regression. More than that, most of it, most of architects are probably relying on transaction. Blah, 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 blah. So, in the OO, in the OO, the IT world changed because internet destroyed the, internet, uh, the ideal world. It introduced biodiversity in IT. What does it mean? It means that many partners, most of them are not using Excel, multi technology, multiple protocol, try to make Excel with FTP. Good look. Excel does not work in a non-uniform environment. Excel does not exist in the real life. I will give you an example. You see, I, I put the picture of my ex-girlfriend. Yeah. No, 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 no. She broke up two days ago. Yeah, really, two days ago. And she told me, I know I find a better guy. A better guy. I don't believe it, but you think I'm sad? You think I'm crying? No. A very nice girl. You know why? Because when I met her, I started a transaction. And I made a roll back. <laughs> That's it. That does not exist. Now, do you remember when we talked about integration? We had this process and we have many partners. So, in integration, we have multiple partners, multiple technologies.
technology in which by protocol. What can we do? If we do integration, do we, do we have to cancel consistency, guarantee of delivery because we are not using Excel? That's a question. And the response is open is the feature for consistency and guarantee and the other theory. So I try to be a bit faster. Okay. Just a notation. If you see an arrow like that, the binding component, if you see a square a rectangle, it's a it's a, it's a service. Binding component means that you receive a message from the outside world and the service here is uh, like uh, the component you find in the previous presentation. Uh, a circle here means that we have some side effect. I will explain what is side effect. Uh, for, for, for the square, I mean that the, the binding support XA that is not used in this presentation. This is the people. You know about people? Who knows that? Yes. In the people, you have three parts. The first part is the, the actual way, say, when policy is not going well. When you have an error, you go to this part, the, 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 green, the red part. And conversation, we will talk about that a bit later. That's it. When you define a business process and you want to simulate XA, you want consistency, you have two different types of business process. The first is what we name the integration process. For example, I receive a message, I put it in a database, I made an XA, XA safety transaction, I send in the GMSQ and I send back the message to my customer. This is what we name the integration process. Maybe it's a short process with few partners and automatic task. The second type of process are what we name business process. Of course, the first are also business process. But we give the business process. This, this is the business process you find in the book. Or you had an accident, you send a message to your company, the company invoke an expert, the expert made a report, and for the report, da da da. It's a longer process with many partners, with manual and automatic tasks. Of course, since you have manual tasks, there is no Excel, there is no constant, there is no guarantee of delivery. It's another thing. We will mainly talk about the integration process. Good. First feature proposed by OpenUSB. When a partner in OpenUSB sends a message to, for example, partner A sends a message to partner B. Because OpenUSB relies on a specification GBI, it is Java Business Integration. Java Business Integration force the, 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 the receiver to send an acknowledgement to the sender. Oh, you have to. Another one is required in the GBI environment. Now, if an emitter sends a message to a people, no case at all, and the people has to send a message to the emitter, and the people send a, mes and a message to the receiver, the receiver has to send back a message to the people. Now it's if I send the, my emitter send a message and I, I have multiple activity to do in my paper. What's happened? Excuse me. Uh, okay. Now the question is when the people send the message back to the emitter. Okay? This is the question. By default, the people send an acknowledgement just after receiving the message. Why? Because the emitter will keep the message and the message context. For example, a GMS, a GMS uh, message queue, for example. Oh, excuse me. With an element to free the resources on the emitter system. Okay. Now what's happened? Excuse me, I'm in a bit trouble. Okay. Now it seems that the slide is missing. Now the problem is, if 
fire the devil here in the activity. And I lost the message. The receiver has no message. And the emitter releases the message. So, I lost the message completely. To avoid that, on OpenSV, you can declare your message as atomic. Atomic means that you will send the acknowledgement at the end of the complete process. Yeah. At the complete process, and if an error occurs in the middle, what's happened? We have no acknowledgement, and the emitter here will keep the message and will be able to resend the message again. Okay? Ask the person or the 
service that creates the audit service to provide, will provide you two functions. Save a record and delete the record. And in that case, if you change the implementation of the service, you have no problem. You have to define the conversation service in your interface. Okay? Let's go. Open any proposal so many other features. This is a quality and renewable extension. What does it mean? This means that you are able to send the same message many times. For example, I can say I want you to send the message n time every five seconds, and if it's not success, you can delete the message, send an error, redirect or suspend. Let's take an example. I have a people that want to send a message through HTTP to an external service. And because the connection is not reliable, the people automatically, by external configuration, you can ask him to send the message three times and wait two seconds between each atom. Another example, if you want to use redirect, the people you send to the same message to the GMSQ, that is blocked, if you try once, twice, and then you say redirect, please go to HTTP. And you send the message to HTTP, but it's not working. And in that case, after two attempts, you send back an error. This means that you can create some quality, increase the quality of service, sending the message many times to redirect the message to another port, another partner, to process your message. And it's made automatically without involving the process defined in the detail. Example, now you have, you have to send a very important message on the FTP server. You try many times, and after two attempts, you say, OK, I suspend my detail. With a monitoring, monitoring tool, you can see the suspended process and call your partner saying, OK, you have a problem with your FTP. Now, we talked about conversation. Forget the first, uh, the first, the first uh, part of the slide. For example, you see I replace the, 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 the red star by the black star. This means that we switch off the machine. Now, I create I, my first step, second step, third step, pro, uh, shut down the machine. What's happened? The process will restart here, yeah? and if you have the compensation, the people is not able to manage it. Because compensation is not starting when you restart your machine. To solve it, on OpenESB, you have the possibility to store the context of your people in the database. This means that your success in the step one, step two, step three, this is recorded on the database. Shut down the machine. When you start again your machine, the people first will go to the DB, up, see that the process is not completed, and get back to internal context and restart on the, at the beginning of the fourth step. The inconvenience of this feature is that you need powerful database, right? because there are a lot of mapping, but you can use also the cache in the database to make it faster. And it's very interesting because if you have if you work in cluster, for example, if you if one instance fell and you connect many instances of the people on the same distributed cache, what's happened? One instance will see on the database that some process are not complete, and after a while, he will pick up and make a an, um, process with the awfully process. Okay. We have also high availability. It's a very very simple, uh, very simple. Uh, a picture on OpenSB, you can find multiple instances or 
multiple machines. You can create high availability. If you have a good design, you can, you can create, also, you can use also the old deployment, I mean that you can stop a version and start a version, but it is a nice design at the beginning. Concerning the high availability, you have to know that OpenSDK has been designed for multiple instances. It's a native design. Uh, it provides high availability, blah, 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 blah. blah. How to use OpenSDK feature? As I explained to you, uh, there are three delivery types, 0N, 1N, and 1.1 delivery. <coughs> OpenSDK guarantees that you have the 1.N delivery. I don't know any system that is able to provide on the long term 1.1 delivery. If you use, uh, for example, 1.8, you need to be pragmatic and clever when you design your application. For example, you know that you can receive the same message twice, for example. To, to, to implement a very simple uh, process at the entry of your system. Think, okay, I check, if I, I receive the message and say in the, first, in the same day, in the same hour, in the same minute. Something easy to implement and the, you avoid the Dublin problem. When I say cleverness, it's very important when we design an application, especially an integration application where we, we cannot choose Excel, it's very important to see what is important and what is not important. The, main, the happy way when everything works well, it's uh, 90 or 99% of the cases. The simple, the simple error can be managed by compensation, quality of service, uh, people persistence. But the fail of the metric of the IT system cannot be managed. This means that the exceptional thing must be made by human beings. Don't spend your time and don't spend your budget to plan and forecast all the cases you can have in your system. You will spend a lot of money, a lot of time for nothing. Because you are not able to imagine all the cases. Manage the happy way easily. Manage the simple error with the tools you have. And if you have a very exceptional system, exceptional error, ask the human to do it. Or external process to do it. And you will win a lot of time and a lot of budget. Uh, cleverness promotes the, promote the stateless. It's the stateful. By example, avoid if you want to have a good quality of service. Avoid, for example, the multi-part communication. For example, I call the process and I call the process again and I keep a concept, uh, a concept. use hydration and dehydration. Uh, we talk about Dublin. Uh, plan the compensation message. What happens if I have an error? The, the worst thing is, oh, in the, during the development we had an error. For example, the customer is, has not the right to do this operation. He is not running the business. And at the end of the day, the developer says, Ah, what I can do? <coughs> yeah, I will send an exception and I do that at that. Is the guy from the business? No. We have to ask the business to cover all the, all the exceptions, uh, all the, uh, the principle or the the main use case were uh, the not working case. Uh, as I explained, human is very smart to solve complex issues. I know that human is uh, expensive. 
but if you have a very complex system, you will spend money for the maintenance and development. Okay, as expense, spend time every day, and say for a Don't spend the time on exceptional, as explained if you have a better rate on my computer. Now, you will tell me, maybe you have a question, if you have a question, but transaction is working well. Do you have some example where transaction are not used and very large system where transaction are not used? Yeah. You have Google, Pipe, Amazon, follow this philosophy. They have no exam. I can give you a proof. For example, you go on Amazon and you want a very special book. You find a special book on Amazon, you book, you pay, and after 10 minutes, half an hour, half day, you receive a mail. Oh, it's the period, we are sorry, we have not your book. We will pay you back. This is not production. Why? Because if they really use the transaction, they will send a message to the pro book provider, they will wait, they, they, they will wait the answer and say that but in that case they should consistency, not availability. And you know that there are some studies from Amazon that say if the page comes with few milliseconds uh, the time to display the page has been increased by few milliseconds or let's say I don't know, half second. The how is the shift d'affaire? The turnover increased by five five percent. For few dozen for few half seconds, they spend a lot of money. Well they choose, they choose to promote. Availability and still consistency. Okay. okay, promotion, promotion. That's it. If you have any questions. It was so clear, we saw obscure. Because in OpenSV you have two parts. You have the the runtime part that is hosted in a, in a <coughs> application server. When I say we migrate to GBoss and let's say to one Gemfire uh, free or something like that, we migrate this part. We have the core, but migrating what what has been done on NetBeam to Eclipse so it's too complex for the, our uh, <coughs> resources. Question? Okay, thanks. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, do you have any figures on the uh, performances? Yeah. For example, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, what uh, typical production rate uh, can you handle? What, what kind of hardware? Okay, uh, I cannot give you. Okay, what I can give you, we we we, we are used to do the or benchmark on the cloud. So I will I will I will talk in six pound machine or 10 row machine. For example, we define a, a, a semi-complex business process. It's a company uh, that has uh, that uh, bought two other companies that sell um, spare car, the EPS detachment. Okay. And uh, so we have access to database, XSFT transformation, JEE call, uh, GMSQ, invocation, writing log, something like that. 
let's say for a 10 pound machine, we process around 12 million messages per day. Around, for, for 10 pounds. So, depending on your budget, you increase. Yeah, I guess depending on the, the process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what you have to know, you have to know that OpenSB is mainly working in memory. It's very fast. So the, in all the use cases I show you, the, the performance problem never comes from OpenSB. It always comes from the legacy you call, you call the sometimes from the FTP server, you charge from the file system, uh, you import from OpenSB. I never see that. Uh, uh, if you need scalability, OpenSB, all OpenSB components have been designed to work in multi-instance. Uh, just to duplicate the instance, 